Good day, brothers and sisters, and welcome to our 40 days of community. And today we will now uh, proceed with the next session, Reaching Out Together. Our memory verse is found in Colossians chapter 4, verse 5 in the New Century Version. It says, Be wise in the way you act with people who are not believers, making the most of every opportunity. There is a command in this verse telling us to be wise in the way we live, in the way that we show what it means to be a child of God, to be a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, with the purpose of making sure that through that they would be able to know Him as their Lord and Savior as well. And that's what we will be focusing on this day. Now, God's Word also says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, love is kind. And truly, when you say that you love someone, you ought to show, and we need to show, kindness to them. The best way to show that kindness and that love is to share with them the love of God. The love of God, that's the reason why He has given his only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. And this afternoon, we will also be focusing on Mark chapter 6 in the Gospels. Mark chapter 6, verses 36 to 44, wherein we can read of how Jesus had shown the love of God to other people who were in need. Let me read Mark chapter 6, verses 36 to 44. After his disciples had approached Jesus and they had reasoned out that, you know, the place where they were at was a remote place and that was, it was already very late, his disciples said, send the people away so they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered, You give them something to eat. They said to him, That would take eight months of a man's wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? How many loaves do you have? He asked. Go and see. When they found out, they said, Five. And two fish. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of the men who had eaten was five thousand. Isn't this an amazing story of how Jesus, who after preaching, sharing the truths from the Word of God, had not only ministered to the spiritual needs of the people who were there, but also of their physical need as well. So brothers and sisters, indeed it is very important for us to take note that in the process of reaching out to others together, there are some you know, needs that need to be met. Now, how are we to do this? First, we have to recognize the need. We have to know specifically, what is it? What's the need? What is lacking? And Jesus immediately saw that, that not only were these people who were there hungry for the word, hungry for you know, the things that he was teaching them, but after such a long day of following him around, they were also hungry physically and also tired 
physically as well. That's the reason why Jesus did not just send them away to go and you know, look for bread or food you know, for themselves. But Jesus had told his disciples to you know, provide food for them, provide bread for them. Jesus saw that that was what people needed during that time. And it really is kind of hard to, you know, just not focus on this, not focus on, on what other people's needs around ours are, right? If we know that these are their needs, may we be sensitive of their needs. Not only to recognize what the need is specifically, we also have to take inventory, okay? Take inventory. Now, what do you have? What's available? What can you immediately provide you know, for this other person that is in need? Okay. After you have specifically recognized what that need is, you, know, you also have to check, what do I have? Okay. Now, the Word of God tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Sometimes when we just focus on, on how needy we ourselves are, we tend to neglect you know, the capacity that we have in helping others. Check. There might be some things that you can provide people with. And those things might not necessarily mean you know, money or food, other things that you can, we can provide them with could be time. Okay. Or also, you know, just someone whom they can, can cry on to, okay? like a shoulder that they can cry on to. Take inventory. What do you have? And in what way can God use you? Remember, you know, that Jesus after asking his disciples to look for food, they only had five loaves of bread and two fish. Now, what is that to you know the 5,000 men who were so hungry, not including those you know, women and the children who were there with them as well? So there was way too many people to feed. You know, with what was only available. But you know what? That was used by God and it was blessed. It was multiplied to be able to feed others. Okay. What else? We have to get organized. We have to make sure that in the process of in the process of reaching out together, okay, there has to be you know steps that we have to take. And making sure that this other person who needs Jesus, who needs to know Jesus, you know, would really reach that point. Okay. It might be that you know, starting to get organized would mean for you to write down the name of the person. What you know is the spiritual state of that person, if he is a believer or not. If he or she has a Bible or not if he or she has ever been to church, or what his or her interests are with regards to uh, spiritual things or things of God. It might start with that. And then later on, God will just allow us you know, to be led through this process. Get organized. Also, another thing that we have to do is to measure the need. To measure the need. What's most needed? Yes, we know that, you know, aside from you know, people being able to you know, provide, be provided with, with what is you know, financial or a material need or food or an emotional need or even something that, you know, would, would help them to... to Know, be led through uh, you know, a challenge or a hindrance 
in, in their spiritual life, we know that the most important need for a person today is to receive salvation for their souls. But what will that take? What will it mean for you and me okay, to be able to, to give them you know, that need? It might take so much effort or time. It might take some, some nights wherein you would have to you know, be on the phone or call them using video chat or chatting them or forwarding verses to them. But we have to measure the need. We have to see how important it is you know, for us to do these things that are very much required for this person to know who Jesus is. Measure the need. One thing that we also have to remind ourselves of, not forget, is to prepare your heart. Prepare our hearts. The Word of God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11, in the Living Bible, God will give you much so that you can give away much. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will break out into thanksgiving and praise to God for your help. Isn't that amazing? That when God has entrusted us with much, what's the purpose? What's the... What's the reason why God has, you know, given us those things? It's not just so that we can give and keep more for ourselves, but rather we can give more away. And in the process of giving more away and in sharing with others, the Word of God says here, those who need them, okay, they will break out into thanksgiving and praise to God for your help. Now, do you see yourself you know, being able to do that and not being greedy, not being selfish? Yes, salvation is, is very personal. It's, it's you know, for each and every person. It's you know, on an individual basis. But brother, sister, it's the most you know, important and precious gift that we can share with others today. May it be that in the process of doing this, our hearts would be ready to do that. We would be prepared to do everything and anything that we can so that we can reach them out together. Last, be available. Be available. The Word of God says in James chapter 1, verse 22, Do not merely listen to the Word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Do what it says. Now what does God word, God's word tell us? What does Jesus himself command us of? Of course, we should never forget that the great commission that Jesus has set for all of us, his followers, his disciples, is to go and make disciples of all nations. We have to make sure that we are always available to do that. We have to make sure that we don't only say, Yes, Lord, I know that that is what you have commanded in your word. But also, maybe also say to him, okay? maybe also respond to him in saying, Yes, Lord, I will do it. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 13 in the Living Bible Translation also says, Those you help will be glad not only because of your generous gifts to them and to others, but they will praise God for this proof that your deeds are as good as your doctrine. Wow. Now here, we, we see that, you know, how people would respond uh, to how we minister to them is not only based on, on the doctrine that we share, but also on the good deeds that we show them. After all, Jesus has commanded us and has told us to become light 
lights in this darkened world, when all of the other people around us would choose to do what is evil, what is, what is wicked, may it be that as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, as children of the, of the light, may we always and continually shine that light in this darkened world that we live in. May we always and continuously show good works so that they may praise our Father in heaven. Now, later on in your group, I would like you to focus on the first point that we have discussed in this video, and that is recognizing the need. And I'd want you to plan out with your group as to what you can do in recognizing the need, not only in the church, also in the community as well. How can your group, how can you as a leader and the members in your group recognize you know, what the needs are? What do people around you need the most? And maybe later on, as you, as you list those things out, you, know, you can plan as to how you would be able to respond to them. And maybe that God, in the process of doing this, would guide you through each and every step that you would be able to take. Indeed, brothers and sisters, it's very important for us to reach out to others around us. And maybe sometimes we see that, you know, I'm alone, I'm afraid, I can't do this on my own. But the thing is that since we are part of the body, then we know that we have others around us who can help. I'd like to encourage you to do this in your group. Maybe you as a leader you know, can start, can initiate this, this process, this point of, of making sure that you know, your group always goes out with the intention of reaching out to others. Or maybe even you know, just a simple invitation from someone you know, could help them already open their eyes, open their ears, their hearts to the Word of God, to the Gospel. And I do pray that God would use you mightily in this. I'd like to pray first as we end uh, this video. We give you thanks, dear God, our Heavenly Father, for this wonderful time. And we praise you for who you are. We thank you that indeed you are a God who always has the heart for others. You are a Father who always longs that if there are still other people who are not yet part of your family, that they would be called back in. And as Jesus, as our shepherd, knows that there are sheep, other sheep, who are not yet part of the flock, that they would need to be brought back in. If there are still those who are lost and longing for them to be part of your family, we know, dear God, that that's always your heart. That always is what fills your heart. May it be the Lord that we would also have the same. Have the same longing for other people whom we know who do not have a personal relationship with you yet through your Son, Jesus Christ. For them to be brought back into the fold. For them to be brought back into your family. And Lord, may it be that we would always be ready in in doing anything and everything that we have. Even Lord, seeing that with, even with the little that we can help, it would already matter so much. Help us, Lord, not only to be good in, in sharing, Lord, doctrines, but also, Lord, be very good and active in sharing our deeds as well. May our light so shine, indeed, 
to others around us so that they would be able to see who you are and to be able to praise you as their father too. Thank you, dear God, for the opportunity that you have given to each and every one of us to minister and to share the gospel. We give you thanks and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for giving time to listen to this 40 Days of Community, Session 2, Reaching Out Together. And may it be that God would continue to build in your heart and in your group's heart the reason for you to reach out together. God bless you.